Statistics is fundamental to data science. This makes one thing obvious. Statistics is a major requirement in helping you land jobs across various data tech domains. And in this video, we'll cover top nine statistics questions often asked in data tech interviews. This is part of our ongoing uh, interview question series where we are bringing conceptual and coding interview questions to you. In the coming weeks, we'll keep adding uh, new videos to this particular series. So do not forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of this enriching material. On this note, let's begin. Let's begin with a basic level question. This question asks what are the different types of uh, sampling in statistics. But before answering that, let us understand what sampling is. Sampling is a method that allows us to get information about the population based on the statistics from a subset of the population or sample without having to investigate every individual. This means that uh, it is a process of selecting a subset of uh, individual or items from a larger group or population to represent and draw conclusions about the whole. And it enables us to determine a population's characteristics by directly observing only a portion of the total population. So there are four main types of uh, data sampling. First is random sampling. Here, uh, every individual is chosen entirely by chance and each member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. Second is uh, cluster sampling. In a cluster sample, we use the subgroups of the population as the sampling unit rather than individuals. Next is stratified sampling. In uh, stratified sampling, we divide the population into subgroups called strata based on different traits like uh, gender, category, etc. And then we select this sample from these subgroups. Finally, we have uh, systematic sampling. In this type, the first individual is selected randomly and others are selected using a fixed sampling interval. Let's move on to the next question at this point. This question asks the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics. Descriptive and uh, inferential statistics are basically two branches of uh, statistical analysis that serve different purposes in the field of data analysis. First, let's understand what these are. Descriptive statistics refer to techniques used to enumerate and uh, characterize a data set's uh, key characteristics such as the variability, central tendency, and distribution. These techniques offer uh, a summary of the data and aid in discovering trends and linkages. Let me explain this with an example. Let's say you have a data set of exam scores of, for a class. Descriptive statistics would summarize the average score, the spread of scores, and most common score achieved. Inferential statistics, on the other hand, uses uh, analytical methods to make inferences about a population by analyzing samples taken at random. To give you an example, if you want to know whether a new teaching method improves test scores for all students, you might conduct an experiment with a sample of students and use inferential statistics to generalize the findings to the entire population. Now, these are the differences between descriptive and uh, inferential statistics. You may go through this table and uh, take a screenshot of this. Uh, let's move on to the next question. This question asks what the p-value is. Now, p-value is a fundamental part of uh, data analysis, therefore a common statistics interview question. P-value is the probability of obtaining results at least as extreme as observed results for the hypothesis test, assuming the null hypothesis as correct and is performed by knowing the distribution of data. In simple words, it is uh, like a measure that helps you decide if your experiment's results are meaningful or just due to chance. Now, let's see how we interpret the results. If the p-value is low or uh, usually less than 0 0.5, it suggests your results are not likely just luck. You might have found something real. And if the p-value is uh, greater than 0 0.5, it suggests that your results could easily happen by chance. You might not have uh, strong evidences for your findings. Now, let's move on to the next question. This is another very common interview question. What is normal distribution? Normal distribution, also known as a Gaussian distribution, is a probability distribution that is symmetric across the mean, showing that uh, data near the mean are more frequent in occurrence than data far from the mean. In simple word, it means that uh, most of the data clusters around the average uh, with fewer points as you move away from the average in either direction. Picture a symmetrical bell-shaped curve. That's the normal distribution right there. For example, when measuring people's heights or uh, test scores, 
many individuals are close to the average and fewer are exceptionally tall or short. Let's uh, see the next question now. This question asks what the central limit uh, theorem is. The central limit theorem states that uh, when the sample size is large, the distribution of the sample mean will be normal. This holds true regardless of the original distribution of the population, be it normal, Poisson, binomial or any other type. In simple terms, when you collect many samples from any population, the average of these samples tend to follow a normal distribution, making it easier to make predictions and understand patterns in data. The CLT is a fundamental concept in statistics. Now let's move on to the next question. We'll now look at advanced level question. This question inquires the difference between correlation and autocorrelation. So correlation measures the linear relationship between two variables. This means correlation is a measure of how two variables changes together, indicating the strength and direction of their relationship. Autocorrelation, on the other hand, measures the linear relationship between values of the same variable. This means it specifically looks at how a variable correlates uh, with its own past values over time, helping to identify patterns and trends within a single variable's historical data. Let's check out our uh, next question. This question asks about skewness and kurtosis. Skewness is a statistical measure that assesses the asymmetry of a probability distribution. It quantifies the extent to which the data is skewed or shifted to one side. In simple words, if a distribution is skewed, it means it's not symmetrical. A distribution is left skewed if it has a tail on the left side of the distribution. A distribution is right skewed if it has a tail on the right side of the distribution. Now, kurtosis, on the other hand, is a statistical measure that uh, quantifies the shape of a probability distribution. In simple words, if a distribution has high kurtosis, it has heavy tails and more extreme values. Low kurtosis indicates uh, lighter tails and fewer extreme values. It helps understand how much data is uh, concentrated in the tails. Let's move on to the next question. In this question, it is asked what are outliers and what are the scenarios where outliers are kept inside of the data. So outlier is an observation in a given data set that uh, lies far from the rest of the observations. That means an outlier is vastly larger or smaller than the remaining values in the set. In simple words, outliers are extreme values that might not match with the rest of the data points that we have. In certain scenarios, outliers may be kept in the data rather than being removed as they can provide valuable information or insights. They are kept in the data for analysis if the results are critical, outliers add meaning to the data, or if data is highly skewed. Let's move on to the next question now. This question is about what degree of freedom is in statistics. Degree of freedom in statistics is the number of uh, variables that have the choice of having more than one arbitrary value. In simple words, degree of freedom are the number of independent variables that uh, can be estimated in a statistical analysis and tell you how many items can be randomly selected before constraint must be put in place. Basically, it's like the wiggle room or uh, flexibility in your data. For example, in a sample of size 10, with mean 10, 9 values can be arbitrary, but the 10th value is forced by the sample mean. If you have uh, 5 numbers and you want to find the mean, you can choose any 4 values freely. The 5th one is to be determined by the mean of the other 4. So you have four degree of freedoms over there. So guys, that's all we had for you today. If you have any more questions, let us know in the comment section and we'll get back to you. Subscribe to our channel for uh, more such uh, content. Goodbye and happy prepping.